Everyone hear me? Does this work? Yes, we are on. Hi, um, my name is Taurus Baylog. I'm known as the mouth of OpenNMS. I could quite literally talk for the next seven hours about OpenNMS without a break, but for everyone's sanity, I'm not going to do that. So what I have here today is a quick introduction uh, to the OpenNMS network management platform. A show of hands, how many people have even heard of OpenNMS? Okay, keep your hands up if you actually use it. <laughs> so you have one user in the back, two users here. Um, so OpenNMS has been around since uh, 1999. Uh, I didn't start it, some people I knew started it. And we published our first um, code on a website called SourceForge. Think of it as old, old guys uh, GitHub um, in March of 2000. Um, the company that started it was called Oculan, and I worked for them, and they maintained OpenNMS until May of 2002, when for a variety of reasons they decided not to maintain it anymore, and I took over the project. Um, the OpenNMS group is the commercial entity that paid for me to be here today, and they've been maintaining the project since 2004. Now, when I, I, I started this open source business, um, they said you had to have what's called a lift pitch. So you're in the lift, and someone looks down, and they see your shirt, says open NMS, and they go, well, what's open NMS? And you have about 30 seconds to explain what something is. And so I came up with this. Open NMS is the world's first enterprise-grade network management application platform developed under the open source model. Ding! Now, I'm also a geek, and I hate when I hear, well, we're the synergy building, market leading, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to break out each of these four areas here. So world's first. As I said, we registered on SourceForge in March of 2000. Nagios, which is like the grand old man of uh, network monitoring, was in January of 2000. They were called NetSaint to begin with, and then they had to change their name for a variety of reasons. So we've been around for a really long time. The next thing is enterprise grade. We started out day one to monitor hundreds of thousands and ultimately unlimited numbers of devices. It's definitely a different take than a lot of open source projects which start off to scratch a certain itch. And they're like, oh, I need to monitor this one thing. Oh, that's great. Oh, can you monitor these 10? Oh, well, yeah, I can do the 10. Now can you monitor 100? And then at some point in time, things break. And so we set out to be as, as, as large as possible from day one. Now, the, the, the main thing I want you to take away from this talk is that OpenNMS isn't as much an application as it is an application platform. Sure, you can take OpenNMS, you can install it, you can point at your network, and it'll start giving you information. But where it really starts to shine is when you customize it to your environment. This is the thing that frustrates me the most about proprietary software. Is like proprietary software will come in and they'll say, hey, we need you to change your processes to fit the software. <laughs> you know, you have these processes, which is how you, uh, you, you, you take care of your customers, and this is what provides your market advantage, and the software says, oh, well, you have to change all that because we don't do it that way, you have to do it our way. With open source software, you can fit the software to your processes. So to do this, we have tons of APIs. We plug into a number of different things. If you download Compass, which is our mobile app, it interacts with OpenNMS solely through REST. So we have a very, very powerful API. And then finally, open source. Um, I am a free tard. I am very much on the free software side of the free software open source spectrum. Every piece of code that we write for OpenNMS is available under an OSI approved open source license. So there's no open core, there's no enterprise version. We only have one version, it's the enterprise version and it's free. Now, there was a show of hands. I was very happy that, that, that people had actually heard of us. If you type in open source network monitoring into Google, we tend to be the first hit. Now, I did this in Australia in incognito mode so that Google's wouldn't, wouldn't uh, add the bias. And we were actually after the, the uh, little um, top free open source um, uh, article here. But uh, for the most part, we've been around for a while. We don't do anything like any kind of SEO um, optimization for this. Now, um, there are four main areas of OpenNMS. We deal with events. We deal with provisioning. When you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of devices, the ability to provision your network monitoring system and to make sure that you're not missing anything and that as moves, ads, and changes occur, uh, you can keep up, that's very, very important. So we actually focus quite a bit of energy on the provisioning aspect of OpenNMS. Service assurance, that's your monitoring, what's up and down, and data collection. There's a whole bunch else to OpenNMS, but these are the four main areas, and I'd like to delve into these a little bit more. 
Um, so event and notification management. We get events. We can get SNMP traps. We can get syslog messages. If you're using telephony equipment, we can get transaction language one. Um, you can create custom events. Um, and uh, so it's very, very useful to act as a, a single pane of glass or single glass of pane, as some people have said. Um, Elasticsearch has been brought up in, I think, every monitoring talk this afternoon. Um, we can export everything into Elasticsearch, and you can use Kibana to uh, do some analysis there. Um, we have this cool feature called the Event Translator, which allows you to enrich events. There is an SNMP trap called um, the Link Down Trap. Well, the only piece of information they send to the Link Down Trap is the Interface Index. Oh no, Interface Index 10 is down, not Interface Index 10. Well, in our database, we actually know that Interface 10 is this circuit, this uh, alias, this description, and so we can enrich our events. We actually, the first time I came to Australia, we were doing some work for Fox Television, and they were monitoring satellites. Well, the satellites didn't have IP addresses. They just had a box that would refer to them as Satellite 1, Satellite 2, Satellite 3, et cetera. And when those events would come into OpenMS, we would translate them into something useful. Um, we also have notifications. I call this a poor man's trouble ticketing system. It does uh, a lot of what a trouble ticketing system will do. Uh, so you can send notifications. Anything that you can do from the OpenMS command line, you can actually um, use as a notification. Uh, one customer in Singapore, we actually fired off a klaxon that would go doo 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 anytime there was an outage uh, of a certain, certain severity. Um, you can escalate notifications, et cetera. Now, one of my favorite things is alarms. Um, so events are kind of your logs. So events happen and you get a, a historic record. Alarms is your workflow. Anyone here ever hear of a, a, a tool called Netcool? It was by Micromuse, it's now owned by IBM. Um, it's a very powerful, uh, hideously expensive uh, network monitoring tool. Um, we duplicated a lot of the functionality. And so you can actually do things like you can create these automations where you can match ups with downs and you can detect things like flapping conditions, et cetera. We have an integration with a tool called Drools. It's a business logic tool um, currently being managed by Red Hat um, where you can do some very, very complex correlations um, using our events. Um, as I mentioned, provisioning. We have a number of different ways to provision OpenNMS. You can just point open NMS at a network and do a, a ping sweep, like a lot of tools do. Um, but usually, our customers will have some kind of um, inventory system that they're using. And what they'll do is they'll export that using our REST API to make sure that open NMS is up to date with all the moves, adds, and changes. Um, we have a map. It doesn't really show very well in 720p. Uh, but trust me, it's really pretty. Uh, I'm not a map guy, but if you provision your devices with address information, it will actually give you kind of a Google map kind of, we use an OpenStreetMaps tile server to actually show you uh, a geographical map. We have some other representations as well. Service assurance, um, back in the day before we had um, containers and Docker, you know, have you met our Lord and Savior Docker? Um, the buzzword was SLAs, what's your SLA? You know, you, you know, can you do five nines? I can do five nines, can you do five nines? So OpenMS grew up in that environment and so we do service assurance. So we do synthetic transactions anywhere from sending a ping to actually doing emails or walking web pages, things like that. Um, we have something unique in OpenMS, and I'm surprised no one has stolen this yet. Uh, it's a downtime model. Uh, as we, we mentioned, you tend to do, do, when you're doing active monitoring, you do a poll like every five minutes. So the problem is um, if you have an outage and you're still polling every five minutes, the shortest outage you can have is a five minute outage. What we do, is when there is an outage, you can temporarily increase polling. We call it our downtime model. So if you had a five minute poll, if there's an outage, we temporarily increase polling to 30 seconds for the first five minutes of the outage. That way we can determine if it's 30 seconds, if it's a minute, if it comes back very, very quickly. Now, the people who come to these conferences are very smart, so I know at least one of you has thought, well, if I have a perfectly timed four minute and 59 second outage, you'll miss it. And yeah, if you need that kind of resolution, you have to pull faster. But what this helps is in getting notifications. Uh, one, one out of every three weeks, I'm on call. And what I hate is when that pager goes off in the middle of the night, and I'm apologizing to my wife, who's a very light sleeper, and I'm going to the other room to get on the computer to, to deal with the problem. When my pager goes off again, it says, oh, everything's fine now. Has anyone ever had that happen to you? Where it's like you get the down, and it's immediately followed by the up, and your heart's beating, and you can't get back to sleep. 
With our downtime model, what I always do is add a little delay, like a two minute delay to the notification. So what the downtime model allows me to do is to do three or four polls before I actually finish the, um, before I actually send out a notification. Um, we have, everyone's talking now, you know, it's cattle, not pets. And so we've implemented this thing called the business service monitor, which allows you to monitor your business services based upon the individual elements. Now this is for a, for a web service. Again, I will post these online so that you can, uh, can actually see them. Um, but the idea is you can, you can build up your components. You can do this manually, or if you have the relationships somewhere else, you can write a script that uses a REST API to actually go through and, uh, and build these business services for you. Data collection, we collect. If we can pick it up on the wire, we collect it. Um, OpenMS is agentless. You do not have to install anything for OpenNMS as long as we can get to it. Um, almost everybody now is using some form of um, either JSON or XML API to where you, you, you craft a URL and you get some information back. We have XML parsers, we have JSON parsers to take that information and convert it into numbers that we can then threshold, et cetera. Um, we use our D tool under the covers, so it's the same thing that MRTG uses. It's, it's been around for a really long time. You do run into issues of scalability. So we have this thing called Newts, which allows us to do pretty much infinite scalability, and it's built on top of Cassandra, or if you prefer, ScyllaDB. It's the same API. Um, and so as long as you're willing to build a big enough cluster, you can store as much data as you want. Um, SNMP data collection, here's a nice little graph. We have an integration with R, which is a statistics package, which will do um, uh, trending. So as you can see, my bandwidth is actually trending slightly down here. Um, we, uh, I monitor tons of things. This is our soda machine. In the lobby of our office, there's a soda machine, so when someone buys a can of RC Cola, I actually get a notice, and when we get below three cans, my office manager gets an email and she goes out and buys more soda. So pretty much if it's on the wire, we can get to it. Here's Newts, which is the new time series database. We, can, we, we have customers doing millions and millions of data points every five minutes. Uh, we have integration with Grafana. OpenNMS was the first third-party plugin for Grafana. So if you like Grafana, you can, take, you can get OpenNMS data and present it. We also have a thing called OpenNMS Helm, which is a Grafana-based application, which allows you to manage one or more OpenNMSs from the Grafana user interface, again, based upon our API. Now our goal is we want to monitor the Internet of Things. We want billions, millions of devices, billions of metrics. And the way we're doing this is we have a new piece of, of uh, software called a Minion. And it's like a little IoT device. I run them on these little NetGate PFSense boxes. And the idea is you can distribute these out. They're redundant. They're fell over. They're pretty stupid. You can unplug them, plug them back in. Uh, but what this allows you to do is remote data collection, and then you can roll that up into a single location. Uh, we have one customer that's monitoring 10,000 events a second um, using these Minions. Um, in the future, we're working on a project called OpenMS Drift, which is telemetry data. Uh, this is ongoing. You can actually go to GitHub and see what we're doing now, but this is your NetFlow and JFlow data, and we're able to do um, 100,000 flows a second. So again, most of our customers are very large companies and carriers, so it may not fit, but I use it to monitor my 10, uh, what, 15 device network at home. So it's kind of cool. Um, here's resources, because I'm out of time. Um, there's a bunch of resources here for OpenNMS. Uh, I strongly recommend if you want an introduction to OpenNMS, go to our YouTube channel. So Google YouTube, OpenNMS, and I have a thing called OpenNMS 101, which is a set of 12 videos. They're each about an hour long, so you've really got to enjoy this kind of stuff. But um, it's just me going on about, but a lot of people found it very, very useful because it is a huge product. Again, I thank you for your time. Um, I don't think we have any time for questions because everyone wants tea. Um, actually, I want coffee. I don't drink coffee, but Australia, you have this thing called a flat white. And I mean, you could just give me a gallon of that in a straw. Um, anyway, you guys have been great. I'll be in the hallway track, so feel free to track me down. And thank you so much for your time.